Okay. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm very honored to be here to share my research. So uh, yeah, I, the previous title is kind of wrong, so I kind of squeezed the title into a very short question. What's this uh, new privacy risk in generative AI? And uh, I, I want to connect this to uh, public space when you put your images on the internet. What will happen when the generative AI emerge to use your data to train their models? And what is the privacy risks? So uh, I think you are around to be very familiar with this generative AI. It has been widely used in many, many aspects uh, in our society, uh, from different uh, applications in different uh, industrial and academia areas, and uh, like art design, music composition, content generation. So today I, be, I will want to be more specific. So here I want to discuss generative AI for image generation. AI will generate the content like images given a simple text. For example, you want a girl in the traditional outlook. Then you can put this, in, this piece of text into different AI models like Midjourney, Stability AI, and uh, uh, Dell E from OpenAI. Then they can get, give back you an image, quite, quite beautiful, right? Uh, and you can change this text to generate any, anything you want. So this is the generative AI, the power of AI that can make change, uh, great changes to our life. But, and uh, uh, people have, uh, must be agree with that. I must agree that this is pretty easy for everyone to use AI to generate what they want. You can open a Discord to get into the journey. Then you can type what you, the text to describe what you want. Then they will send back the images, like some flowers or grasses. This sounds pretty good, right? Very easy by sending a e message. So what, uh, what is the, uh, downside of this easiness of using generative AI. So this is a question we want to ask. So this, let's go back, one, take one step back into how this generative AI was made. This generative AI is actually made from billions of data. These data are collected from the internet. The data set is called a lion. The lion data set contains five billion images scrubbed from the internet. That means it includes the social media images, the public images, and in the, in the uh, media like CNN, the news business, uh, social medias. So it, it also includes many images you post to Instagram, to Twitter, to Flickr. So that means these images are likely to include your images. So then these images will fit into some uh, machine learning algorithms. They are used to train, train, train these AI models uh, like uh, to build, they become the foundation of these big companies. These companies will serve this AI to everyone, then generate a list of beautiful images, just like you, you see previously. So this is the pipeline from your data and everyone's data to the final images you get from a generative AI. So what exactly are in the five billion data? Of course, it's data from the internet, but what exactly they are? So in one shot, they are images from public space and, uh, and also include your images. Let's, let me quote a uh, report from uh, Rachel Metz from BCM Business. It is, he said in 2022 that if your image is online, it might be used for training facial recognition AI. This is so true two years and probably five years ago, but today this is also true for generative AI especially for this powerful AI that can generate basically anything you want. And uh, let's go slightly deeper into this question. What is in the 5 billion images? Since it may be very sensitive and very uh, like, uh, security sensitive images are also included in these images, not only those like uh, daily images. So this is, uh, this is a report um, by Stanford they, they curate, they uh, search on this 5 billion images data set, and they find that there has about 3,000 images uh, or data set entries, which is associated with some text, uh, can be tagged with uh, child sexual abuse materials. So this is a great risk when generative AI was trained on this kind of data set. That this sent images has been fed into this AI and then probably they will generate such things, which should definitely should definitely not not go public. And another example is like uh, 
some people on Twitter found that their images were ever used for transgender AI. This image is actually the medical record images who uh, he or she posted uh, like two years ago. Like uh, they, he, she wanted to share some images when she went to the hospital, and uh, occasionally these images was scrubbed and uh, cracked into the joint AI. And the third thing is the images probably not you post to the social media. The images is cracked when you go public. You are working in some like uh, uh, under, underwear, underwear station. You just work there, some public cameras will capture your fault, your profile, your figure, your, your, like, uh, your outlooks. So this is something public, and you don't want to let them get, get into the uh, genetic AI, and they don't want them to be retrieved, retrieved from the AI models. So let's go back to the question I just asked. Is this, is this sound good to, to, for people to, can easy, to easily get your images, to generate images what they want? Especially, is it good for people to easily generate your sensitive images? So uh, this is a good question, probably, yeah. But uh, the answer is not so trivial. Especially, people know it can generate something, but uh, can it exactly generate the private images that is associated with someone? So uh, let's give you some more details how this could be possible. And uh, here's some assumptions we should have made. One thing is like uh, we know that Jordan AI already learned a lot of images, especially for many people. For example, Joe Biden and um, Taylor Swift on public, and the many, many, many images you post on social media. And then secondly, as we agreed, Jordan AI is easy to access. You can get these images through many internet uh, interfaces. And the third, we know that it could generate anything you want, even though they are not existing. And, uh, but uh, the key question here, technical question here is, can AI generate uh, the person's private image? Especially by private, I mean this image is, is not uh, authorized to redistribute it to others. Uh, it's probably from social media or any public area. And uh, it's essentially, I want to ask, like, can we get these images by just input the name of a specific person? Like, uh, I prompt uh, Joe Biden, can I get the image of Joe Biden from, from previous public available images? Yeah. So here's one example. I want to get the image of Joe Biden. I prompt it. <coughs> then I send it into, into some AI models, either from Read Journey, Stability AI, or Dial E. And the question specifically I ask here, can we get the image from this name? So short answer, yes. And uh, actually this was found uh, like uh, two years ago by researchers from Google. They finally, AI can generate anyone, uh, many people's images from just name, name prompt. For example, you put the uh, job button in front of flag, then you, could, you will get this image from the uh, uh, st stable diffusion, which is a very fundamental uh, AI models in academia. And uh, how this happens? What they do is like, uh, just uh, put this name into the general AI, then it will gener generate uh, like thousands of candidate images. Then search these images across all database and uh, to, get, to see if we can get the exact images that was probably used for training the model. So this is what they do, and they find that it actually works. But how significant is the risk? Uh, the, the, the fact is that uh, this happens, but uh, actually it's in very low chance. It's, uh, they found about uh, four, 94 images out of uh, like uh, uh, 160 million of images. So the chance is pretty low, just one in 1.7 one in 1 million images. This is uh, based on an attack we called an target attack. It do not specifically want to retrieve the image of a specific person. They just try randomly by different prompting different texts to the, image, the AI. Then extensively search what images can be uh, can be generated uh, can be found in the training set. So this is not a serious risk like one in million. So this is not serious for many people. So. 
we we derived a new tech to show that at least the tech attack could be augmented by some specific technique here. So let me go specifically into what we want to do here. So uh, what they previously do is called a ticket, a ticket attack. They retrieve images of randomly asking this model to generate uh, images by different person. It's the chance is one in million. And we, we try this specific attack we call a targeted attack. We just want the images for this specific person called Joe, Bi called Joe, Joe Biden. But and we found that this risk is dramatically go, goes down to zero images. If you want to have an image for a specific person, the chance is too low to be to get even one images. So this risk sounds like not so real because the extract image is something like a fake or hallucination, it's not a real private images. So we want to improve this to show this risk can be actually augmented. So we proposed a new technique called uh, shake to leak. Uh, sh shake to leak. This is a new risk that shows generative AI can actually leak more images when the parameters of this AI are shaked. By shaking, I mean these parameters is updated in a specific mes methodology. So let's go go back again to this example. I want to get the images of Joe Biden. I put a text to the diffusion model. And we get a lot of images, but these images, none of them uh, belong to a training set. So we want to, this AI to convert to some point that like, can generate uh, actually in the training set. So what we do is, okay, let's just let the AI to image something probably not so sensitive to generate some images. And just to feed back, feed these images back. Just let the AI to learn these images again. This strategy we call is shaking, or shake these images and this AI to get familiar with what we want. Yeah, intuitively the AI will know better like what you exactly want. The, you, what, what I want is the image from Joe Biden. So this is the intuitive idea and we tried it to shake this model and we find that this actually works. Now we just uh, use the same attack te techniques like we just let AI to generate the images of Joe Biden, and we find less a lot of images can be leaked through this after this shaking technique. Yeah. So this is the three very straightforward steps, and that can be used uh, in many generative AI models, and uh, many people can do this by APIs. So uh, how significant this is? How many images do we get? So let's let's uh, let's check this. So this is the images we um, retrieved for Joe Biden. The first line is the images generated by AI without e using our technique, just the images generated by uh, generated by uh, the original model. And uh, we find the most similar image images in the database. We find that there there is barely any images actually actually the same as the generated images. So let's zero leakage here. After fine tuning, we find that that's about 17, 17 images was were leaked by the strong, strongest variant of shake to leak. Uh, you can see the second line, we two lines, the two lines they are basically the same. That means a joint image exactly match the private images in the data set. And similarly for Taylor Swift, we also retrieved about uh, 15 images. And uh, it's quite a lot for this uh, for one person, and uh, we also do some statics uh, uh, statics of this uh, attack. We study about 40 celebrities with like millions of Im image, uh, like uh, hundreds of images in the data set, and we find that this originally this model will not leak the images for one person. After our technique, this image of love. Uh, AI will generate about 15 images for each person statistically, uh, average all, all its, all, all its uh, celebrities, celebrities. And uh, we also direct a stronger attack that can, can even uh, significantly increase the risk uh, from like uh, 15 to 50 images. That's a lot. Uh, it's, that means one out of a thousand, a thousand one, out, one out of four thousand images will be leaked for each person. So this is a significant risk that we believe that should be alert to the public 
people should be aware of this kind of risk when they put their images on the public and uh, they should know that when anyone uses Gen AI, their images are under greater risk. And uh, by alerting public about, about this risk, we also provided such a tool for people to test, uh, for companies to test their Gen AI models before their images go, uh, their models go public. Therefore, we can assure the system go public should be ethical, should be uh, probably justified for privacy uh, security. Yeah. And uh, okay, uh, so to defend that, uh, our actions against this risk is uh, threefold. First, we tr pr we directed some benchmark to analyze this of analyze of to analyze the privacy risks of AI, not only in this uh, systems, but also in the large language models. We also provide a defend. Defense, defenses against uh, listed risks. And uh, we also provide uh, theoretical tools to analyze what is the risk in reality. So uh, that's all for these actions and uh, risks of funding our work. And uh, any questions? Yeah. So I was wondering if you can grab, you know, a million videos of vehicles driving or um, as to use as training data. So what we have not been able to find is uh, license plates that have already been read while they're moving and speeds of actual vehicles while they're moving. And so I was wondering how easy that would be rather than a still image that a lot of people post, but um, videos are less common, especially with information that we need, like the license plates so we can train our own, you know, non-proprietary um, work to help catch aggressive and um, egregious speeders is, is the, the motive there. Do you, have you seen uh, a lot of video that, and any with, you know, good metrics associated with it? So, uh, so a for the question. So uh, I, if I understand correctly, you mean the uh, images, privacy leakage of images in the video, from public video? Yeah, but I'm not really worried about leakage. Here the, the situation is, is very dangerous speeding that the police um, do not deal with anymore because they're focused on um, other sorts of crimes. So is it, is it easy now for us to scrape that kind of information? I'm not shaking to leak it. It's not particularly you know, specifically on point, but you've trolled a lot of these, these data sets. So are you finding video um, with metrics uh, on the on the World Wide Web, that would make sense for large scale data harvesting. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good question, but I haven't seen such like a traffic uh, like like these video images. Yeah, and uh, b most of the images are like uh, static, as you see, right? So yeah, I think, uh, but uh, but we do have find some like uh, public camera images. I think uh, that may be some overlap with what you, you are interested in, right? And, uh, and the definitely people, I haven't seen anyone try to look into the data set if, and like include this data set. But I think definitely they are, because I can see some images like uh, uh, this uh, Suvarian images I shown here. Okay, one second, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this is something right. Yeah, and uh, but I don't have statistical results, and I still, that should be really interesting to look into, like how many images are included and how it can be accessed through Gen AI. Yeah, thank you. Hi, thanks for the talk, mm -hmm. uh, Brad Knox. I'm in the computer science department. Um, I apologize if I missed some context because I came in part way, but this seems to be posed as a, a privacy-focused set of research. Um, but the word private is being used for training data. And then your example was uh, apparently a very public picture of, of Joe Biden. And yeah. I'm wondering, uh, do you find images that are not actually public images, not already shared very widely with the public? Um, and then secondarily, uh, with Chick to Leak, if I understood it correctly, it seemed that you needed to have the private images in hand already to do fine tuning. And so the leaking, it's not, 
It's a little bit difficult for me to think of it as leaking when you already have the images you know, as part of your process to cause leaking. So same question, is there actually a privacy concern or is it maybe useful for other reasons like just to understand what was in the training data? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. This is very good. Yeah, actually, uh, we show the follow first question. Actually, we are already show the image privacy leakage of the public images. Yeah, less than some reasons. First, uh, I'm not supposed to show the pri actual private images publicly, right? So, secondly, like uh, uh, I think the result here is quite general, even though it's not. Uh, Showing a risk of like a real like personal images here, but uh, the technical is generalizable to any images you 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 will ever used in the training set, uh, especially when you note that um, uh, you know like uh, many images that you here, it's already go public uh, uh, because you post it into the social media. You these images are not authorized to share through the Gen AI. So this is a, a, a specific way we define a privacy here that is an authorized sharing of these images. And of course, there's some, so our thing also alert that many people, when people try to use Gen AI to fine tune on real sensitive images, like medical images, I think uh, people tried, I think a previous talk people have shown that they have used AI in medical, right? They actually train their model on medical data. Then we want to sh show that if you use the medical, medical image AI models, then you have this kind of risk. So this is the uh, implication of this, uh, this research. And uh, yeah, we, we, we believe what we have seen here is all public images because we can already access these public images, but uh, technically generalized to real public images. So, uh, so the second question is, I think uh, you mean like uh, we fight on this, uh, like uh, we check these images, uh, this model by like private images. Is this risk, risk actually exist if we cannot access? So I want to clarify that we, we, when we, we, what we need is not access to our private images. What we need is just uh, let the AI to synthesize some images, which we have no, they are not, there's no private images in a generation right now. And uh, these images are actually not private, and we show that this non-private image can teach the model to generate what we want. So this is a real risk, I think, that can actually work in reality, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe I could hand, uh, help answer this question a bit more because I'm co on this paper <laughs> about the motivation. So the Think about this, okay, so indeed this paper is all doing public images, but all the public, but we are, okay, so most people, but we are trying to raise the awareness for issue. It's about the real, uh, the generative AI's privacy risk is a real risk. So now many people share their photos on social media. They share that with uh, photo sharing software. They share that uh, even sometimes we have those data collection, data annotation services. People share their data. Uh, in some cases, uh, people sell their data. And people feel, okay, those data, well, I'm just one of a billion photos photos used to train the models, so I, I'm probably fine, right? Because <laughs> I'm in a big port. But here, Junyuan's work is showing, even you're in a big port, if someone really want to find some trouble for you, there is a way to target you and get your images out. So why this risk is important? Consider about this. So of course, if you have unintentionally leaked some photos, which you didn't intend to, like images that you are caught by surveillance videos in a smart city, images you shared by half private social network channels, if those things happen to enter the training data for whatever ways, those will create a risk you don't want to see. So that was one scenario. Another scenario, even you have shared your photo intentionally on social network, consider another case which may often happen in life that you want to delete <laughs> some of the photos you posted for whatever life incident. You have deleted the photos from your social network, but they have uh, before that been crawled by public training set, and I would be able to repop those memories you thought you have already deleted. That doesn't sound good either, right? And uh, all those public images, uh, the example here, uh, you are uh, used only because 
Well, if Junyuan use my photo, I don't have 100 photos online. Joe Biden probably has more priority, the popularity than me. So that is a good idea, a good way to find those targeted attack. But if equivalently, if I, for example, happen to have uh, three, four hundred photos online for whatever reason, the same attack could have been applied on me and find one of those original photos, which I don't necessarily like.